Tonight on Newswire LA, the second part of our look at the Scattergood Generating Station and its big repowering project. All of this and more coming up right after the credits. Welcome to Newswire LA. I'm your host, Chin Thomas Sangsi. Again, we're coming to you from the Scattergood Generating Power Plant here in Los Angeles. We were here last week to show you what it looks like as the project gets underway to refit Turbine 3 of this power plant. We're going to show you more of what's going on here, what's going on outside of the plant, and what the plant looks like itself. So sit back and get ready for another look inside of the Scattergood Power Plant here in Los Angeles. Did you know that the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, at one time, installed and maintained the city's street lighting network? It's true. Before there was a Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, there was a Bureau of Power and Light that handled electrical matters in the city. It wasn't until 1925 that the Bureau of Power and Light split with most electrical services outside of street lighting maintenance becoming part of the Department of Water and Power. The portion that remained that handled street lighting became the new Bureau of Street Lighting. Even with the split, the Department of Water and Power still handled some issues related to the street lighting network. But that all changed in 2006 when all matters related to the street lighting network went to the Bureau. The Department of Water and Power, however, still does some limited street lighting installation and maintenance. Keep this in mind. Street lights mounted to freestanding poles, like the ones you see here, are maintained by the Bureau of Street Lighting. Street lighting mounted to utility poles, otherwise known as utilitarian lamps, are installed and maintained by the Department of Water and Power. Here's an interesting thought. A lot of the power generated by the DWP powers the city's street lighting grid. Just how many street lights are there within the city limits? Let's ask the head of the Bureau of Street Lighting. Well, um, City of Los Angeles, we have more than 210,000 street lights. Uh, and uh, we are responsible to maintain all those street lights in the city. And we work very closely, actually, with the water and power in a lot of them because the higher voltage uh, circuits are fed from uh, older transformers uh, and service points that DWP maintains. Uh, and we work very closely with them uh, when the outages happen. Again, as I mentioned earlier, once one light goes out or when we have a ground in the system, the whole block or maybe two, three, four, five blocks go out. So we try to tend to them uh, with the water and power. Last week we looked at the Scattergood generating station in its pre-repower configuration. We looked at some of the construction taking place on the site, but this was only touching the surface. This week we'll talk about the repowering at length with several members of the LADWP. We're going to start off, however, by bringing back a guest from last week. I'm talking about project manager Jose Gutierrez. He spoke to us last week at length about what's going on here, and I think he deserves to be heard a second time. This will help put into perspective all of the other guests who follow him. So let's go back to the roof of Scattergood Generating Station and Jose Gutierrez. This is Chin Thomas Sanksy, Newswire LA, and I'm here with Jose Gutierrez, the project manager here at Scattergood Generating Plant. Good morning. Good morning. Give us a quick rundown of the process that's taking place at this very moment to repower this plant. 
I understand it's turbine number three that's uh, actually starting the whole process. Give us an idea of what's going on inside. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, we, we're going to be replacing our uh, Unit 3 steam generator. And uh, part of the process first is to uh, improve the site to allow the new equipment to fit on the site. Uh, here at Scattergood, we have a small terrace site. So we have to do a lot of um, work up front, a lot of civil work to enlarge the site to allow the equipment to fit. So that's what you can see behind me what's going on where there's a lot of wall constructions that have to be built and uh, once all the uh, site is developed then the equipment, the large major pieces of equipment will be delivered and they'll be located on their foundations and then all the electrical and mechanical connections will be made and then we will commission the equipment and uh, test it and start it and hopefully energize it and put it on the system. And ultimately, what's the estimate date of completion for this entire project? That The estimated date of completion for this project is December 31st of 2015. We're actually aware that government mandates and some environmental concerns have uh, necessitated part of this repowering of Scattergood. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Give us the key bullet points behind this whole project. Sure. Some of the the constraints and government mandates um, include uh, the elimination of uh, ocean water for cooling, um, improved uh, e efficiency, and uh, reducing emissions. So, for example, this project here, we're going to have a dry cooling system, which is basically a radiator, and uh, we will not have to use the ocean for cooling with that system. Uh, this technology is... Uh, a lot cleaner and more efficient. Um, it uses a combined cycle, which makes this equipment um, consume less fuel for the same amount, uh, same amount of uh, power that's produced from the current equipment. Um, also, this equipment uh, it will be allowed to cycle more frequently, so we can turn the units off at night when power is not needed um, and having less emissions throughout the day that way. Here's the big question. With this refit, what, what can the Los Angeles citizens expect to get? Cheaper bills, better energy? What's going to be the benefit that comes out of this entire repowering? Well, with this repowering, the ratepayers from the city of Los Angeles can expect many good things, such as uh, improved reliability of the power system. You know, we're going to replace aging infrastructure with brand new advanced technology. Uh, this technology will support DWP's goal of 33% renewables by responding very quickly and much faster than the conventional old equipment that we have. Um, plus we have environmental benefits. We have, uh, we're going to be uh, eliminating the use of ocean water for cooling and we're going to improve efficiency um, in consuming uh, less uh, natural gas which re will result in less um, emissions to the environment. All right. Jose Gutierrez, thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Joining us next is a new face, Mohammed Kajavi. Mr. Kajavi is the supervisor of underground transmission systems for the DWP. He has one of the biggest jobs here as the repowering of Scattergood takes place. It is his job to have miles upon miles of power conduit and fiber optic cable laid from this point to the Olympic receiving station and beyond. Let's join Mohammed Kajavi, who's with me right now. And now I'm here with Mohammed Kajavi of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, and he is the head of underground transmissions for the department. And did I get that right? Absolutely, that's correct. Now explain to us a little bit of what your job entails in terms of underground transmissions. Yes, to take the power that's generated at the Scattergood, we have to transmit it to uh, distribute it uh, along the city. To do that, the department has chosen to go underground cabling as opposed to overhead. Underground cabling we have chosen for its reliability and aesthetic and convenience of the city residents. Uh, the underground transmission is basically a system of cables, three cables, um, because it's three phase, and this one set of cables is good enough to carry enough energy to power 600,000 homes just to put it in perspective. The quality of construction is 
very important. The backfill, the cement, everything has to be absolutely quality, checked for quality for thermal properties and other properties. Uh, we take it from Scattergood, some 11 miles away in West Los Angeles, uh, along Bondi and Olympic. We have a we have a station where we land there, and from there we distribute it along uh, to to different parts of the city. In addition to that, this cable will further add to our stability and quality of the power that we provide to our customers. Uh, our crews, this, this, um, this project is going to be built by our crews and we are getting some outside help from contractors. Uh, we are um, going to be building this uh, for the next two and a half years and at any given time uh, some 20 people are working on this project full time. Just the underground transmission portion about 20 people full time will be working on it. Now, Muhammad, that's actually, when I think about it, 20 people full time on this particular project, that's a relatively small number of people, or at least it seems to me. Well, 20 people working on construction part of it. We started the design, the um, uh, preliminary design, final design, procurement, uh, about over a year ago. And uh, they'll, now we're ready for construction. Uh, if you go down the street, they are building trenches, and they're working 24, 24 hours, six days a week. Now, Mohammed, one thing does come to mind, and it kind of goes back to what you said at the outset when you started out. They're doing the transmission lines underground, and one part of it is for the aesthetic, and obviously the other part is for the technological. Is there a plan, and I'm just kind of veering off, off topic here, are we going to start to see less and less of the telephone utility poles that we see around the city? This is a little bit different. The power that's transmitted from here is at 230,000 volts. So these cables, you don't see these, um, these on telephone poles. Well, you do see uh, these lines built on big transmission towers. High tension transmission towers. High, high tension transmission towers. And uh, yes, you probably won't see them spread around that often. Uh, th this is, uh, it's more reliable, aesthetic, and uh, it's less disturbing to the neighborhood. Getting back on track, get, tell me more about what's going on with what you do and with this project. Uh, what I do is I had a group of engineers who design, under, design and maintain underground transmission. And this was, uh, like I mentioned, the, the process of design had uh, started uh, uh, over a year ago. And we're in the process of building the uh, conduit. First we build conduit, we fill the conduit, and then we pull cable, splice, and maintenance holes. Uh, those are all coming up uh, in the next uh, two years. Now, you've got this map behind us. What's, yes, what's this, the significance of this map? This is an aerial view of this purple line. Basically shows this is where we are at Scattergood. Mm -hmm. And this, this is the Scattergood where we're standing right now. And from here, it goes at 230,000 volts underground. You won't see it after it's done. You will not be able to see anything, but it's there. It goes through these maze of uh, streets and will land up here, which is uh, what we call receiving station K. And receiving station is a place where we get high voltage, 230,000 volts, and through transformers, we lower the voltage and we distribute it along the city. In addition to that, this will serve as a link to the valley transmission link to the valley so we can exchange power between the south side and the valley because some of our transmission come from the north and from what I understand and I was talking about this with Ralph Payne the other day um, I kinda made it simple the big power goes from this station then it will go up these set of conduits which you just showed us to the station located here at Olympic. Those tend to be those little farms with a building on them. 
if I'm if I'm understanding it right. That's generally that's generally correct. The receiving station is a place where uh, there's a lot of electrical equipment to change the voltages. There's control issues. Along with this cable, we have fiber optic that uh, communicate the both uh, from both ends as well as monitor the condition of the cable. If there's any problem, we'll. Uh, will find out so it will land at the uh, receiving station then it will uh, distribute it at lower voltages eventually to what you see in your house or your business uh, to to go through this we have worked very closely with um, different city agencies Caltran because uh, we do go through their property their jurisdiction uh, and we, we work very closely to uh, mitigate the effect of construction on the residents. And one of the things that you just said to us is that you have a number of fiber optic cable, cables going through the system. This is basically a smart system. I assume it's going to, if there's a problem with the system, it will automatically notify you guys out here instead of having to try to climb through and f troubleshoot different things like that. Well, you still may have to troubleshoot, but it will let you know in a central location that there's something wrong in the system. You're right. We still have to uh, go inside the maintenance holes and stuff, but this uh, fiber optic will let us know when there's a problem. It speeds things up so we can uh, monitor the conditions. Oh wow. oh, wow. Anything else you want us to know about the transmission aspect of this project? No, because uh, the, the transmission um, is a major link and it will, like I said, uh, further the quality of power and stability of power uh, throughout our system. Mohammed Kajavi, thank you for joining us. Thank this you. was great. Thank you. you. Mohammed Kajavi's not quite done with us. He's arranged for us to travel to one of the nearby sites where conduit is being laid at street level. Stay with us as we move temporarily from this site to an area just a quarter mile north of the Scattergood plant on Vista Del Mar. Here we are after a short car ride. Joining us are Marianne Pearson, who is a senior member of the DWP's communications section, and our good friend Ralph Payne. The buildings to the immediate right are part of the Hyperion Sewage Treatment Plant. Also joining us at the site is Mohammed Kajavi. And we're down here on Vista Del Mar where they are doing the trenching for the underground cables from what I understand. And I'm here with the foreman on the project. What's your name? My name is Scott Trawick. Scott, good to meet you. Give us an idea of what we're doing here. Uh, excavating through Class E soil. What we're using is shoring boxes here. These are 8x20 and 8x16 boxes. It's pretty much a continuous operation, 24 hours a day. Uh, what we'll do is we'll excavate it, set our shoring shields. Uh, install the conduit, continue on with concrete encasement and a thermal, a special thermal backfill. And these, and these casings right here, I see they're built above ground. Do they have to be lifted in ground or are they built down in the trenches once you dig them? No, they're built up top and we basically skid them over to the excavator. Excavator has a special set of bridles you see laying on the ground right there. We'll reach over, pick them up, set them in and excavate throughout the inside of them. All right. And how far how far is this job going? Because I see there's work that's been going on back south and you're heading north. How much farther north do you have to go? My portion here is approximately 150 feet north of Imperial for a total of about a mile three. How many cables and how much conduit is being uh, installed below ground? Right now there's six eight, six eight inch conduits and two four inch traveler communication conduits. We're actually building two independent 230 kV systems simultaneously. Scott, a lot of people who drive this stretch of road, they get a little bit chapped because uh, they That's have to go that way, thing. they go that way. That's an <laughs> what would you tell the drivers of Los Angeles as they pass this particular project that you're working on, you know, as, as they're screaming obscenities at you, what would you tell them? First of all, I do appreciate more than they can imagine the patience that they've shown already. There's been quite a few traffic changeovers and there are quite a few good people out here. For those of you who are rubbing a little bit the wrong way, I apologize. We're moving as fast as we can. We're doing this 24 hours a day, six days a week. We've made great headway, and I think we're going to carry on the same. And how many feet, I, this just occurred to me, how many feet of ground are you covering per day, laying and excavating and so on? We're pushing an easy 100 feet a day. 
on good days we're pushing close to 300 feet a day which is pretty good for the amount we're installing so it's actually very good numbers we're very happy you said a little bit of it now but what but if you were talking to everybody here in los angeles who saw you doing this particular kind of work what would you tell them thank you thank you department of water and power is a very good company i do appreciate them and thank you succinct and right to the point yep. thank you scott thank you all right we're heading back to our base at Scattergood, where we're about to join the LADWP's John Dennis. Mr. Dennis is in charge of all of the DWP's major projects, including this one. And I'm here with the LADWP's John Dennis, and you just told me that you're a manager for all of these large, large projects like the Scattergood project. What other projects do we have going on that we may not know about? Well, we're just finishing up a similar project at one of our other plants. We just finished that. And then after this project is finished in 2015, we'll have three more similar projects to replace some of our old generating stations. And so what that will do is help us to improve the reliability, replace some aging equipment, and then it'll also help us to improve some of our air quality, reduce our emissions. And then also uh, we're looking at how these new units will help us integrate with our renewable energy that we're increasing for the supply in Los Angeles. Now talk to me a little bit about what it's like. You're kind of the big guy holding, holding on to all of these large projects. What are the difficulties in managing large projects like this? Well, uh, the first thing is safety, and uh, we want to make sure, even as we're wearing our hard hats today and safety equipment, uh, to make sure that our employees are safe. There's a lot of equipment, as you'll see, and as you've covered in your uh, footage here on this job site, and so safety is number one and making sure that our employees uh, are safe during the workday. And then secondly is just a lot of logistics. We have a lot of material that will be coming into this site uh, from all over the world uh, to provide us with this new state-of-the-art generating equipment. So there's a lot of logistics. Uh, but the good thing is is that we've got capable employees and contractors that are uh, knowledgeable engineering firms that are helping us in getting this job done. Wow, and tell us a little, tell us some things you want us to know about this particular project going on at Scattergood. Well, the good thing is, is that um, uh, the job is underway and we see a target date uh, of 2015 to be done and uh, we believe that we're on schedule, on our budget to make this job happen. And one of the beautiful things is that you didn't have to take this plant offline to make this happen at all. Uh, correct. This is, uh, and may have been shared with you earlier, but this project is very similar to changing an engine on an airplane while it's being flown. And so as we speak, uh, these units below us here are generating power for Los Angeles while we build new ones that will be ready to run uh, for the city and without interrupting our power supply from this location. So, And you're working with some other agencies like our, our familiar Southern California Gas Company to make this happen. Is it very common that when you do a lot of these large projects that you deal with other entities like that to make these things happen? Oh, certainly. There's a lot of, uh, there's regulatory agencies we work with for air quality and our permitting of these projects. We work with the Coastal Commission being right here along the coast. And so there's other permitting agencies. We work with the local city here, El Segundo right nearby. And so it involves our community, it involves our city uh, regulators, and as well the local agencies. You know, Ralph Payne was telling me the other day when I was here, and I've noticed that once you get the community involved in a project like this, talk to me a little bit about that community interaction that you guys have every day. Certainly, and that's what our site managers uh, work very closely with the neighbors. Uh, sometimes our trucks, we leave the headlights on or there'd be some noise. Uh, but they have some people right here nearby and it is a community that's part of our goal uh, not just for the overall environment but right here in our immediate community while we're doing these particular projects wow and what else should we know about this particular project well the last one i think is about this project is a major driver for it is not only for reliability and integrating our new renewable projects but it is also to reduce the use of our ocean water for cooling at the plants and so this at this site will be a sizable step in reducing the amount of ocean water we use for cooling our generators. And we have six more projects that will take us out to the year 2029. And by that date, we'll be completely off the use of ocean water for cooling our power plants. So this is one piece of six more steps that we have to do towards that particular goal. But by 2029, we'll be there. Is it safe for me to assume that 
we're starting this renewable energy project right here. And then after it's done here, it'll go out to six more sites. Uh, that, that's, there's uh, yeah, six more units that we'll be uh, replacing. That's correct. So by 2029, uh, we'll be off the ocean water for cooling. That means that all of the 1950s equipment and even the 1970s equipment I've seen in here, that's going to be gone. That's going to be gone and replaced. Uh, that's correct. So we'll have state-of-the-art equipment that will be able to operate more efficiently, uh, a cooler, and it'll be able to do the work that we need to to, uh, to provide power to Los Angeles. You know what, I'm curious, and I don't know if you can answer this question, but I look downstairs and some of the 50s style equipment is still here, it's still operational. Do you foresee a lifespan for the new equipment being just about as long? Well, right now our expectation that this new equipment that goes in will have at least a 30 year lifespan. Uh, that's our plan and that's what we expect out of the equipment. And then beyond that it depends on how well we just maintain and operate the equipment. And uh, so we will have people here that will continue to maintain and operate this new equipment so that it lasts that long and perhaps as long as this other equipment has. John Dennis, I'm going to give you a chance to talk right into my camera, which is right there. If you had anything to say to the citizens of Los Angeles, what would it be? Uh, I'd just like to share with uh, the people in Los Angeles that uh, today and through this particular filming event, you're going to see a lot of people that are working for you and on your behalf and to see the infrastructure that's behind that light switch. So when you turn that line on at night or when you come home and turn on the power in your house, just know that this is providing you power uh, to your homes and to your businesses. And we're excited about continuing that effort to make sure it's reliable, the renewables are there, it's clean, and it's an efficient uh, source for you at home. John Dennis, thank you for taking time out to join us today. And that's it for this edition of Newswire LA coming to you from Scattergood Power Plant in Los Angeles. We hope you've enjoyed what we've shown you tonight and hope you have a better understanding of what the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power does for us each and every day. To follow more of Newswire LA, look us up on Facebook and Twitter at Newswire LA. And that's it. I'm your host, Chin Thomas Sangsi, saying so long, and we'll see you back here next time.